Well, okay. when, we, when we moved in here, uh, a late 50s house, um, there was a solid fuel Rayburn, which was great and, and very uh, characterful. Uh, and it worked really well and provided a lot of heat and it provided all our hot water. But it was solid fuel and uh, solid fuel is definitely not uh, the way forward these days. So we had to look uh, at alternatives. It also had um, so the uh, storage heaters, which were the really old fashioned ones. We tried using those. There were only three of them in the house. We tried using them. They were so expensive and not very efficient. So we stopped using those and just managed with the Rayburn in the kitchen. And it was pretty chilly upstairs as well. There was and no insulation or anything. No, a drafty house with no insulation at that time. But it's all changed now. Well, the traditional option in this area uh, of uh, central Devon is very much going down the oil or gas route. Um, we're not at ground here, we're not on mains gas, so that would have entailed a gas tank probably in the front garden, which is probably not a particularly good look. And also with the oil tank as well, that might have been had to have gone into the front garden. Um, but with all the talk of fossil fuels and uh, climate change and all of this, and also knowing what's coming in the future from the point of view of uh, legislation, um, we felt that those two were probably not the way forward, although they would have worked, um, but uh, that we needed to find an alternative. And I'm pleased to say that we did. Well, we did. Yeah. We were quite, uh, we looked into the um, air source heat pump. That was very expensive. And what seemed to be ridiculous with a south facing house and a huge roof was to start to look into solar and electric. And so that was really how we started the investigation into um, some sort of electric uh, op options. Which is the the interesting thing with the air source heat pump, and many people have said this, is that it's a no brainer to have an air source heat pump because under the uh, renewable homes incentive, that will be paid back over a seven year period but you've still got to find that upfront X thousands of pounds, uh, which means that something else is going to, um, when you're under constrained budget as we've been, something else is going to have to give. So you either have the air source heat pump and don't have the new roof or whatever. So uh, uh, also the other consideration with air source heat pump is the level of disruption, um, because we then would have had to have had a wet system installed into the house, which is what we have not done. And, um, and that has meant less, uh, less uh, uh, of uh, a mess made around the house. And also, of course, it's kept the costs way down. So uh, uh, I think we've ended up with a solution which is working and, I, and affordable. I think we just mm. felt as well, it just seemed so ridiculous not to use the solar option. Mm. We looked around and a lot of other houses uh, for uh, different um, solutions, but they'd got a lot of solar around. And so we thought, well, that must be a starting point. So that was really where we came in with the electric idea. Mm. Actually, I think possibly one of the starting points on this is here we are up a hill, um, south, fa south facing, yeah, aren't we? South the facing, the sun comes up over there, we watch it coming across, and you think, hold on a second, we've got a roof up there. <laughs> um, I think we need to catch some of this sun, yeah. and we do. Yeah. And it works fantastically when it, when it shines. Well, that's an interesting one. I, so I, I, well, both of us did an extensive amount of research into heating solutions, basically starting with a house which is going to be a carte blanche, completely ripped out. Where do we go from, from here? And uh, so, you know, you look at everything you possibly can. You go on to Dr. Google and do all that sort of stuff. And... Um, uh, lots and lots of research and of course in the, in the process of that the possibility of infrared came up in addition to the traditional oil, um, gas uh, uh, and now uh, the air source heat pumps which are so well known. Um, but infrared initially, to be honest with you, I dismissed because I thought it sounds a bit of a gimmick actually. That was my first thought. Yeah. And then when, once we'd gone through all the, the journey of working out whether to have gas and oil and thinking, no, we won't. And the air source heat pump, definitely not from a cost point of view, came back to infrared and I looked at it in detail. Uh, and I had the pleasure of going up to yourselves in Bristol uh, and um, actually looking at the panels. And I thought, hold on a second, this is for real. This is a real possible solution here. And uh, um, I took it from there.
basically. I think it was a surprise as to how clean and modern it was. Mm. Um, infrared, I think our experience had been outdoor heaters in pubs and yep. places like that, mm. and therefore couldn't quite see how on earth that was going to fit into a house. And when we told friends what we were doing, they didn't really have an idea as to no. what it would look like. They couldn't picture it. Um, but since friends have popped round and, and family, they've all been amazed. In mm. fact, they come into the house and they don't even, where is the heater? What, yeah. What's going on? They can't yeah. understand how we're heating our house because it's so streamlined. Well, none of the rooms <clears throat> have got anything imposing on the walls. There's no radiators on any of these walls. Everything's up there yeah. on the ceilings. And... Um, uh, it just gives us so much extra space. Yeah. You can put furniture wherever you want. You're not constrained by a radiator stuck under a window uh, uh, with heat disappearing goodness knows where. And it just and gives the house um, a steady temperature mm. so it's comfortable. It's just, just like a bit like underfloor heating, I guess. Uh, we've, we've got one or two of, uh, bits of that in, like in the bathroom, for example. You just get that gentle heat. It's exactly the same feeling. Mm -hmm. You don't walk around feeling like you've got a hot head or anything like that. No. All those things that people said, oh, will it be like this, will it be like that? It's just a comfortable heat yeah. in the home. Although, or what I would like to add on, on that, though, on a really cold winter's day, you walk into the kitchen and the two panels in there are, uh, are on. There's nothing nicer than sitting there thinking and shutting your eyes and thinking, this is just like the sun. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. It's fantastic. Well, he'd not done anything like this before, and I think he was a bit sceptical initially. But uh, once he got into it and, and started doing it, I could tell that um, he, he became more and more enthusiastic about it. Uh, and I think it's turned his mind around in relation to infrared, although you'd need to maybe speak to him. Um, but I get the impression he's, 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 whether he's enthusiastic, I'm not quite sure, but he, he certainly has a, a good understanding and he's very happy to deal with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And also, of course, the ease of installation. For him, it's like putting a light bulb in, a light, uh, putting a light fitting he, in. He did say mm. that. He said it was a really easy installation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he also um, said at the beginning, your company had offered to offer any support if he needed it. So that gave him confidence. Mm -hmm. Um, and certainly, the conversation we had the other day with him, he said um, he now knows there are other options. Yeah. So mm. he could mm. recommend that. Well, although we were uh, half the house was uh, had uh, double glazed windows, the back of the house didn't. Uh, so we sit in the kitchen in the Howling Gale. So we've got new windows at the back. But the other important thing is the insulation. We had no insulation in the cavity walls. Uh, we had empty cavity walls here uh, through a government scheme that that's all being filled. So we're fully insulated. Uh, all there's hardly any drafts or anything in the house now. So combined with this heating, it's working so well. I can't really put into words how how well it works. It's just such a lovely yeah. heat, you know, and it's been, um, very warm. It's been absolutely 101% successful. Well, it's, I mean, the, the setup basically starts with the solars up on the roof. Uh, and um, it, what, I, what I like to think is we've got the sun coming down onto the panels up on the roof and then coming out through the panels on the ceiling which is a, a nice sort of thought isn't it yeah, yeah. but um in but also as i say we don't have a boiler here we're fully electric uh, we don't have an electric boiler that was a decision a conscious decision that we made although it is something we could go back to if we felt the need to but we don't think we ever will need to do that so i approached a company called mixergy who uh, and we've got one of their tanks installed a smart tank so basically the solars, when combined with the battery storage, so the solar and battery storage, so we have solars of around about, I think, 4.1 kilowatt uh, um, capacity coming off the roof into, I think it's an 18 kilowatt battery also installed inside the loft area upstairs. So that means that we can store enough to make decisions about how best to use the, our own electricity without going to the grid. Uh, so we can decide uh, to top up the hot water tank. We can decide in the mornings, as we often do, we've got battery, uh, battery power or we've got um, the sun shining and we can go to the panels yeah, and get free heat, basically.